Good morning. I'm Ann Fraley, the rector of St. Peter's Episcopal Church in South Windsor, Connecticut. Welcome to this 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. We have folks here with us live, and I hope some of you are joining us online. We begin our order of service with hymn number 551, Rise Up Ye Saints of God. Joining us using the Book of Common Prayer, we continue with the uh, acclamation on page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We continue with the Gloria, page 356. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Collect, the Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, it is only by your gift that your faithful people offer you true and laudable service. Grant that we may run without stumbling to obtain your heavenly promises. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated if you're local for the lessons. Our first reading today is from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verses 1 through 9. Now this is the commandment the statues and the ordinances that the Lord your God charged me to teach you to observe in the land that you were about to cross into and occupy, so that you and your children and your children's children may fear the Lord your God all the days of your life and keep all his decrees and his commandments that I am commanding you, so that your days may be long. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe them diligently, so that it may go well with you and so that you may multiply greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them 
when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand, fix them as an emblem on your forehead, and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 119, verses 1 through 8, found on page 763 in the Red Prayer Book. Let's read this psalm by alternate verse. Happy are they whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Happy are they who observe his decrees and that seek him with all of their hearts. Who never do any wrong, but always walk in his ways. You lay down your commandments that we should fully keep them. Oh, that my ways were made so direct that I might keep your statutes. Then I should not be put to shame. I will thank you with an unfeigned heart when I have learned your righteous judgments. I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. Our second reading today is from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 9, verses 11 through 14. But when Christ came as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy place, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls with the sprinkling of the ashes of a heifer sanctifies those have, who have been defiled so that their flesh is purified, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to worship the living God? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our sequence hymn begins with verses 1 and 2 of hymn number 455, O love of God, how strong and true. After the gospel, we will conclude with verses 3 and 4. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that Jesus answered them well, he asked him, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and besides him there is no other and to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any question. 
the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts always be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. 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 Today, the word of the day is love. In Deuteronomy, we hear about how we are to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength. And then Jesus expounds on that. We are also to love our neighbor as ourself. Now most of us can probably articulate one or two things we know about love, perhaps more than that. And we probably will talk about the love we have for our friends, our families, our spouses, parents, our children, we might talk about the love we have for pets, for creation. We might talk about our love for music or art or something else in this world. We know something about love and the way that love finds expression in our lives. And mostly we know about love as something from the heart, as affection. We know about love as it's reciprocated with another person. But Jesus, tapping into Deuteronomy and the ancient words of his forebears in the Jewish faith, their love has more to do with a fullness of life and living than just the affections of the heart. Because when you love with all your mind and with all your strength, those aren't heart things, those aren't feelings necessarily. They tend to be love in action. Love expressed not just through emotions, but through a commitment to another, to a thing, to justice, if you will, to action. Love is a full-bodied experience. So when we talk about loving God with all of who we are, it's not simply an affection we feel for God as we might understand love with one another. We are to love God with all of who we are by putting into action the different ways that we come to know and understand God and relate with other things and people in the world. Love is a full body experience. Now there are a variety of ways that we come to understand that. And there are a variety of ways that we already express love in those terms. Love in action is often expressed through caring for others. We might make a meal for someone who's sick, or we might run an errand for somebody who's not able to get out and do for themselves. During COVID, as we've been limited physically by being locked down or sheltered in place, especially in those early days, we found ways to care for one another by doing for them on their behalf. Those are ways that we express love beyond just a feeling, just an emotion or affection. Now Jesus wants to throw in another component to how we know love and experience and express love. And that's by loving our neighbors as ourselves. 
It's one thing to be able to comprehend love as we know it in a mutual relationship. That's kind of easy. We learn it first with a parent when we are our child. Our parent expresses love for us and we in turn come to know something about what we feel in response to that expression as love or loving. We come to associate affection with, dare I say it, siblings. Even though often our relationship with siblings can be fraught with other kinds of tensions and competition. We come to know affection through our friends and then with our partners and our spouses. And that kind of love taps into a deep place within us where words are not adequate to express those feelings. But now Jesus is saying, love your neighbor, not just the neighbor who lives next door to you or down the street or even another part of town or within your own community. Jesus is saying, love others. Neighbor here is shorthand for others. It could be someone you will never meet. It could be someone extremely different from you who shares a completely different culture or life experience. Someone who lives across the world. We are asked to love that neighbor as ourself. And that's where the notion of the Deuter Deuteronomic um, invitation or commandment to love God with all of who we are really is how we figure out how to love that neighbor. Because love is more than just affection and feeling. Love is about being fully engaged in who we are made in the image and likeness of God. We come to understand that God loves us. And how do we then turn that around and love others in a similar way? Not a paternalistic way or a paternal way. Not in a way that parents love their children as we imagine God loves us, but in a way that says, I honor who you are and want to give you the fullness of that respect in the way that I will love anything that comes across my path. Now you may in fact have people in your life who you love but do not like. Can anyone relate to that? experience, okay, it's not that uncommon. There are people we love, but we don't really like. And there are times when we really have to struggle to like someone who we have regular relationships with. I had a boss once who was an incredibly difficult person to get along with. His temperament was prickly, was part of it, but he just wasn't a very nice person. But I had to work with him. I had to find ways to get along. And then one week at a staff meeting, we all took turns on the staff kind of presenting a little learning opportunity. And the, this particular week, the opportunity was to name something we admire or like about each of the other staff members. And I thought, oh good. <laughs> this person I do not like had a hard time finding something to like. I was not only pushed to find that, but articulate it among others. I dug deep, I found something I could say that I genuinely admired. And if you've ever done that kind of exercise before, you may have found that by being able to identify and name the thing you can admire about another person, it does in fact change how you see that person. And because it changes how you see that person, it can change how you relate to that person. And once you change how you relate, the relationship itself might change. Now sometimes that cuts to be one-sided. In this particular case, I believe it was. I, I found things to like and admire. I chose to see this as an opportunity to shift the nature of the relationship. And so I behaved differently toward this person. I didn't notice that that was reciprocated. But that was not... <laughs> That was not the point. I'm responsible for my feelings and my actions, not someone else's. So how he behaved was on him, and I could see and know that. But for us, it is upon us to decide how we want to act and interact and 
experience love with and toward another person. You've heard the phrase, think globally, act locally. Sometimes how we love someone else, some other, who we know to be in need can be a challenge because that person may be in another place, in another time zone, speak a different language, have some need that we don't feel we are equipped to address. But I have some good news. We are about to embark upon an opportunity to love a neighbor in ways that we don't often have that opportunity. You will have read in a recent issue of Light Breezes that a coalition of interfaith groups and some community groups is forming to support an Afghan refugee family here in South Windsor. It's an effort that will take a lot of work and a lot of hours, at least initially, to sort of launch this resettlement program. But consider that there are between 50 and 60,000 Afghan refugees who are now being housed on military bases in the United States. Those families and individuals are living in airport hangars. Number one, that's not hospitable. It's not sustainable. And it's not the way to build a new life. So the State Department has reached out to the 200 or so refugee resettlement programs across the United States and asked for help. And in the state of Connecticut, we have a group called IRIS. Let's see if I can get the initials correct. I believe it's Integrated Refugee uh, Immigrant Services. It was started by the Episcopal Diocese of Connecticut. If you didn't know that, I didn't know that until recently. And they have, are reaching out, Iris is reaching out to communities in South Windsor to say, would you be willing to support a family so that they can begin again? If you think for a moment that these refugees left Afghanistan fleeing for their life because they were persecuted, before, because they had been allies in many respects with the United States military when we were positioned there and stationed there and in country there. If you consider that they've given up everything they know to take a chance on a new life in a place completely foreign to them with a different culture and a different language and different customs and in communities where they know for the most part no one, consider the isolation of that experience and how humbling it is to put your own life into the hands of others and depend on them for help. The opportunity to help a family find a new life is an extraordinary one to express love, to love a neighbor who will truly become a neighbor, to help them make a transition into a place where they can learn a language, get a job, kids can attend school, where they can begin to have a role and a place in this community where we can teach them about our life and they can teach us about theirs. And how all of that expands our understanding of the people of God and the human family. That is loving our neighbor as ourself. Now, all those families that are currently in hangars may not be able to find placement in the three to four months since they arrived there in early September. And if, in fact, there aren't places for them to go, what happens next is that FEMA steps in and provides trailers like they do to families who have been displaced from hurricanes or other natural disasters. If that were to happen, what doesn't happen is those families will not have a community to support them, will not have advocates to help them get health care, education, or employment, won't have a network of people who can help them learn the language of this country, or to begin to assimilate in ways that make sense for them. We have the opportunity to love our neighbor as ourselves. To not just invite, but to embrace a family in desperate need of a place to call home. Where among the things that we need from volunteers are folks who will look at the um, ways to get kids in, enrolled in schools, to 
begin to provide language opportunities and skills for adults. The kids will pick it up pretty quickly to work on employment, to make sure that where we find housing is on a bus line so that when they don't have a way of getting around themselves, they can access public transportation. To eventually help them acquire a car and get a driver's license. And until that time, get them to places that aren't on public bus lines, like a doctor appointment. To connect them with health care to find ways to raise money to help support them until they are on their own feet financially. There are many moving parts to this particular opportunity, but we're talking about an entire community of South Windsor, of this church, of other churches, of the town itself, all of whom will come together to make sure that a family, just one family, can find a place to call home. That's what it means to love our neighbor as ourself. And it's a way that we do so not first from the heart because these are people we don't know. We don't know about them something that we would come to love once we do know them. We don't know their sense of humor and right now can't imagine laughing at their jokes or heaven forbid that they might laugh at ours. <laughs> but because we love God with all of who we are, we see this as a way of fully engaging in the opportunity to love our neighbor. And if there are parts of ourselves that feel resistant to this as an opportunity, that say, why should I help them? There are people who feel that way. Then I invite you to take that up with God. And if God comes back and says, you're good where you are, keep with it, so be it. If God invites us to live or love more deeply, to tap into who we are, to discover who we can be in light of this opportunity to love a new neighbor, we will experience transformation and a kind of new life, not only for ourselves, but among each other as members of this parish and of people who live here in South Windsor or in adjacent communities. God invites us to love fully, deeply, passionately, and compassionately, knowing that we first are loved by God. I used to worship with a guy who had an amazing voice. He was a musician. He taught music at Trinity College. And he would belt out the hymns on a Sunday morning in church. And somebody once asked him, how is it that you sing with such sort of robustness? Why do you just belt this out? And his response was, God gave me the gift of this voice. I owe him the favor of returning it. What gift has God given you? How might you return the favor of that gift to God? By sharing it with love, by giving of yourself and a neighbor in need. If not an Afghan refugee family, what other neighbor is in need? But right now, we're kind of circling our wagons around this potential family who we will welcome and make part of our own family, not just of God, but of South Windsor. And in that doing and in that loving, come to learn something new about who we are as people made in the image and likeness of God. When we do that, I truly believe that we will experience the fullness and completeness of what it means to love. Amen. Amen. Will you please stand if you're local or even if you're at home? 
and join me in reciting the words of our faith as found in the Nicene Creed, page 358 in the prayer book. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the people, Form 1, found on page 383 in the prayer book. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Michael, Ian, and Laura, our bishops. For Nigerian bishops John and Marcus. For Ian, our rector. For the ECCT Bishop Transition Committee, grant wisdom and discernment as they undertake the work of nominating candidates for a new bishop diocesan. And for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this town of South Windsor, for every city and community, and for those who live in them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the, sick and the suffering, and those in need of comfort, especially Nancy, Dorothy, Jerry, the Trust family, Sandy, Bob, Kim, Mike, Jody, Janice, Ted, as well as those committed to our ongoing prayers. We pray for those afflicted with the coronavirus, their families and communities, for those whose work puts them at risk of infection, for healthcare workers and professionals, who continue to treat individuals infected by the virus and for their families, for nursing homes, staff, and residents. For these and all in need of God's comfort and mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the concerns and organizations supported by St. Peter's through Mission, especially South Windsor Human Services, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For members of our armed forces serving at home and abroad and for their families, especially Kenneth Fraley Jr., Richard Nunez Jr., Kevin Merrill, Jason Sarah, Jason Dorval, and Ryan Waite, for victims of natural disasters and human violence throughout the world, especially the people of Haiti and Afghanistan, communities impacted by wildfires and flooding, and those who have been victims of recent gun violence. 
for persons and, com and communities impacted by centuries of anti-black bias and for others seeking to undo the harm of racism. For groups to whom we extend hospitality through the use of our building, especially BSA Troop 62, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. In our parish cycle of prayer, we give thanks for our abundant blessings, for the ministry of the Altar Guild, for parish members, the Dixon, Dooley, and Dorsey families, for Lucas Barber, who is celebrating a birthday, as well as Danielle and Brett Bennett, who are celebrating an anniversary this week. For, wealth, for what else are we thankful? For the poor and oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the repose of the soul of Bob Bateman and the more than 745,000 people in the United States and 5 million people world, worldwide whose lives have been lost as a result of the coronavirus and for all who have died in the hope of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. To the communion of St. Peter and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord our God. Almighty God, you have made us in your image and call us to share in the renewal of this world. Inspire us to seek and serve Christ in all persons, that the proclamation of your good news in our worship, in our words, and in our work may lead us into the fullness of your love. Through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And for some reason that I haven't quite put my finger on, there's no confession included in today's order of service. But the good news is it's actually optional. So we're opting not to include the confession today, or at least to recite it. So the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. And you may be seated.
Continue with the great thanksgiving. Page 361 in the prayer book or page 6 in your printed order of service. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever say this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin, and become subject to evil and death. You, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. 
do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which has been shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Using the prayer of thanksgiving found in the prayer book on page 365 or the printed order of service midway down page 8. Let us pray. <clears throat> Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for announcements. A handful. Um, tomorrow evening, if you're interested in the Afghan refugee resettlement effort, there is a meeting at Temple Beth Hillel at 7 p.m., so all are welcome to come to that. Uh, we're beginning to put flesh on the bones of the early information we've received and begin to um, get some structure so that we can make application to receive a family. First thing, Saturday, if you feel so inclined, the third annual sleep out to draw attention to uh, homelessness is taking place in Nevers Park. Come, um, they're starting at like three in the afternoon and there are things like music and food trucks and there'll also be some speakers to talk about homelessness. Uh, Officer Jim Barrett from Hartford Police Department will be here. He has uh, basically what he does in, in his full-time position is to serve the homeless population in Hartford um, as a member of extension of the law enforcement community there. Um, and then you're welcome to bring a sleeping bag and sleep out overnight. The last time I checked the forecast, it was gonna get down to 38 degrees Saturday night which is what it did a couple of years ago when we did this for the first time. You don't have to tough it out. I tried the first year and I did not make it. So um, I'll just confess that. But in the morning, we're going to uh, open the church at 6.30 for coffee and as a place for folks who do spend the night out to warm up and then serve breakfast at 7. If you'd like to be part of that effort, please let me know and we'll work you into the, the process of doing that. And this week, you can look forward to some information about signing up to help with the Thanksgiving meal for seniors in our community. That will be by Sign Up Genius. Uh, it's got particular designations for how many people we need to do particular things, which include 
chopping up um, vegetables to go into the vegetable to make stuffing, to um, make gravy, to help. Uh, Ken's going to put the turkeys in the oven, but once they come out, they need to cool and then get um, broken up and, and sliced up so they can be served and distributed. We will need people to make some deliveries to those folks who aren't able to come pick up their meal. So if that's something that uh, you want to do, we can use your help. And we also will need some desserts, apple and pumpkin pie. Lots of ways to be involved in that effort. If you haven't heard this already before, last year we served 128 seniors. And in addition to that, members of our police department who were on staff during the holiday. And a few of us who worked that day also ate. <laughs> We fed a lot of people. So it's a wonderful ministry and way to love our neighbor. Are there other announcements? Okay, doke. Then, Dora Lee, you'll be glad to know that I'm going to remember to announce our closing hymn, which is number 529, In Christ There Is No East or West. Oh, before we do that, I have to bless you. See, I always forget something at the end, don't I? Just jumping around. So go out into the world in peace. Be of good courage, hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, tend the sick, honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of God's Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. And now our hymn. <laughs> in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you have a lovely day and a good week, and we'll see you next week.